Hello, and welcome back to another episode of... Well, actually, this is the first episode, but, like, I'll be saying that for the rest of these. Today, as you probably read the title, this is gonna be my full spoiler review, so click off if you haven't read Into the Pit. But this is gonna be my full spoiler review thoughts, theories. It might take a while. Don't have that long this to film this video, but I might be making a part two because there's a lot to talk about in these stories. So let's talk about Into the Pit. Now I'm doing the first story just Into the Pit, not to be beautiful or count the ways. Those will have separate videos. Now we've got that out of the way that took off 30 seconds of the video. Let's just skip out over. All right, Into the Pit stars Oswald Kid. Um. He's a kid, he lives in a trashy town, and he wants to move away. But his parents say they don't want to because... I think he was, like, because they're poor and they can't afford it. I don't know, the filler was a bit boring in this story. It gets better in some of the other stories. I've noticed that Fazbear Frights has got progressively better as we go on. Like, Into the Pit, those stories are good. They're a good start. They introduce us to what the f stories are going to be like. Um, Fetch's stories... Those are great. I actually, those are my favorite ones. Um, one forty-five a.m. Unpopular opinion, but I don't really like the stories in one forty-five a.m. I like the new kid because it has Golden Freddy in it, and I'm a big Golden Freddy fan. But I don't like the other two that much. Room for One More is fine, but 1.45 a.m. was just kind of boring to me. Anyway, and then, like, Step Closer is good. Those stories are good, or decent. Um, Bunny Call is good, but you get the point. They they keep getting better, okay? So, yeah. So, let's talk about Into the Pit. Like, fully, no. Anyway, so, like, in Into the Pit... Our main Fazbear-induced villain, I'll say that, F Fazbear made villain, is Spring Bonnie, which I found that was a genius method to go. Just start off the books with Spring Bonnie, because that's kind of where it all started, isn't it? I mean, it all started with FNAF 1, and there wasn't really a reference to... There was the newspapers, but they never mentioned Spring Bonnie specifically. Anyway, yeah. So, um... Yeah, I was, um, I liked Into the Pit. It took me two minutes to say that. <laughs> Almost three. Anyway. So, yeah. Let's talk about Spring Bonnie a little bit, because I have a lot to talk about with this character. He seems to, like, <sighs> tell me if I'm getting this wrong. But I think the story's kind of implying that he has an illusion disc in him. That he can, like, try, like, kind of like the Twisted animatronics, where they can make themselves, like, look real when they, within they aren't. If I understood the Twisted animatronics right. Um, yeah. Kind of like that. But, like, it's, he can, like, make himself look like a his dad. But it doesn't work on Oswald. Also, Oswald, speaking of Oswald, I found Oswald interesting, because he has, like, a connection to the pizzeria. Before he knows what the pizzeria is, he didn't know about Freddy Fazbear's Pizza for the most part, for a lot of the story. And then he finds out. And it was kind of confusing. It was kind of confusing. He draws animatronics a bear, a bunny, a chicken, a fox. He draws animatronics. And only later in the story does he find out that those sort of things actually exist. It's kind of weird. Anyway, back to Spring Bonnie. This Spring Bonnie, like, I'm assuming has an illusion disc. It's kind of hard to say if Spring Bonnie in the story is a dude in a suit, like it is in the games, or an animatronic. I vote animatronic, honestly. Like, everyone's been jumping on this idea that it's like a demon. I don't, I don't think that. Just because it bites Oswald on the hand with a ton of teeth doesn't mean it's a demon. We know animatronics that have a lot of teeth. Have you looked at Nightmare Chica? That thing has like three rows of teeth. Yeah. No, duh. That 
this thing is going to have teeth. They all have teeth. They all have, most of them have two layers of teeth. They have teeth, and they have an endoskeleton mouth in them. No, duh, it's going to have teeth. Just because it's classified as fangs doesn't mean it's a demon. But I did find Spring Bonnie interesting in this story, honestly. It was kind of weird. It was honestly kind of weird, yeah. Um, I won I'm wondering if, like, I'm trying my best to talk about the story without spoiling the rest of the stories. Because it's kind of hard to talk about the first one without talking about the other two. But those are separate videos, so, like I said, they are separate videos, I promised you guys. So, yeah, let's just, I'd like it if people kind of commented. I know not my, many people watch my videos, but, like, it'd be appreciated if you, like, commented down something. Like, a theory on Spring Bonnie is kind of hard to classify. Like, I think it's the illusion disc thing. I think he has an illusion disc. Don't think he can, he's like a transformer where he can just transform, no. I think he, he's like has an illusion disc, but because Oswald has like seen him already, it doesn't work. I don't know. Mm. See, I liked Into the Pit. We're not, I kind of want to talk about the time traveling ball pit. Yes, you heard me right. It makes more sense if you've read the story. But yes, there is a time-traveling ball pit in Into the Pit. So I think it's kind of... When you say Into the Pit, like, <laughs> in a FNAF story, yeah, that makes it sound more out there. The point is... <sighs> what? I mean, it's just a plot device to get the plot moving forward. Not, it's fine. It's fine. I don't know why but it's fine it's fine see it was seven minutes long i was expecting this thing to be way longer <sighs> let's think thinking like hmm i actually like i'm gonna have a lot more to talk about with count the ways and to be beautiful this one's kind of like i've noticed that in fast bear fright stories the title book, the one that's on the cover, like, the cover book, so to speak, is always the most boring one, in my opinion. Like, 1.35am was weakest in that. Fetch. Okay, Fetch was actually, Fetch was actually probably, I actually really liked Fetch. You'll, you'll see when we get to that one, but, like, Step Closer was, again, kind of boring. Like, but then again, it fit the most to be the title book. Like, Dance With Me wouldn't have fit that well. How would you draw Ballora's face on that? Like, Ballora's hard to draw. <laughs> I would know. But this is the location I'm trying to They have a lot of detail on them. They are hard to draw. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Blackbird. Again most, sorry, least interesting. It was the least interesting, but it wasn't the worst. We'll talk about that when we get to it. I actually think, you know what, they're kind of, in Blackbird, they're kind of all the same with me. They're always, they're kind of all good. I liked all the stories in Blackbird. And then, like, the cliffs, yeah, the cliffs especially. The cliffs, it may, it may like, the breaking wheel was supposed to be it, but, like, the cover-up was too gruesome. I really don't want, like, FNAF to go that way. Or, like, I understand that there's a lot of younger FNAF community fans, but, like me, especially like me, but I'm gonna buy the book anyway. Like, what difference does it make? Honestly. So, yeah. Just wanted to talk. Alright, I have a few minutes left to film this video. Anyway, yeah, I put a right, I put a time to film this video. Um, yeah, so, honestly, simply said, dreadfully, terribly, something is amiss about this story. Yeah, like, 
Gumdrop Angel. We'll talk about that. I've read the first two stories. Very good, both of them. They're both... I would... I want to kind of... I've heard... I've heard that the two... Like, Gumdrop Angel is the least gruesome out of them. I don't want to get into spoilers, but... um. Ooh, I'm, I'm excited if that's the least gruesome one. Like, I kind of understand. I would still argue that Sergio's lucky day isn't quite as gruesome as Gumdrop Angel. Like, they're both very gruesome stories, and I'm excited for what we found, because I have high expectations for this thing. I made a video talking about this. I haven't made a video on the new Friendly Face cover. No, I didn't make a video on that thing. It's just a weird cat with, like, the puppet mask, but entirely white. Like, I'm so bad at this, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I'm annoying, I know. But anyway, like, I didn't film a video on that. I filmed a video on Gumdrop Angel because I thought the story's names, if that makes sense, were the most interesting. I was I was kind of hyped for Gumdrop Angel. Like it was going up. The hype meter was going up. This is a, like and I think it delivered. I think Gumdrop now this is turning into a review of just fat and spare frights in general. We have to talk more about Into the Pit. That's my cue to stop this video. Sorry. <laughs>